Hey moms and dads, this webinar is for you if you have a kiddo struggling at home with asthma and allergies, and they also happen to have anxiety and be nervous and stressed, and you see that stress building up in their body and you want to be able to support them. I want to share with you an understanding of why those can be paired together, and more importantly, what we see in our office as a way to help kiddos not only calm their brain and their body so they feel more grounded, more at peace, but allow their breathing to start to work naturally and allergies and immune systems start to balance and clear out as well. So what happens is early on in life, stress is a critical factor. And we know this in so many ways, but it's one of the key ways that these two get linked together. Because what happens is if our body is in a stress response and that fight or flight or that sympathetic, obviously anxiety, panic attacks, nervousness, worries are all gonna come to the forefront because if our brain's perceiving danger, it's going to say, sound the alarm bells, and that causes us to be anxious and nervous. That The area of the brain that sounds the alarm bells, the amygdala, we'll talk about here in a moment. Um, but what happens is when the body is in constant fight flight, it obviously is gonna affect our breathing. And then I wanna talk about in a little bit when those hormones, those stress hormones are in a sense like always there, it starts to impact our immune system as well. And that's where we're gonna see the allergy piece. So how does this come together? Or where does it start from, I guess I should say. Um, what we'll see early on in kiddos is stress starts in the womb. When your baby's in the womb, their nervous system is growing and developing. It's one of the first things, the brain, the spinal cord, the central tube they call it in the womb, is one of the first things that's really coming online that is allowing everything else to start to grow and develop from that. And your baby, their umbilical cord that connects to them, we think of as a lifeline because it brings the blood, right? After baby's born, um, we know that if, if you can let a little of that extra blood come through the umbilical cord, it, it brings a lot of nutrients and stem cells and a lot of the baby's blood supply in right after baby's born. However, what we often overlook in baby is that umbilical cord also carries nerve supply and nerve messages. And it's the lifeline because it, yes, it brings blood, raw materials, the foods, the nutrients baby needs, but it's also bringing the nerve supply. And what it's reflecting is the state of the mom. So if mom is under stress, maybe you've had a baby when you're early in life, or maybe you're later in life and you're working, working, working all through pregnancy. I know when my wife and I had our son, um, my wife was trying to finish up some big projects for work and she was trying to get some team members in place so she could go on maternity leave and let the business keep running itself. So she was pushing herself really hard, especially when she knew the deadline, well, baby's gonna be coming pretty soon here. She had a very specific deadline that she was trying to accomplish a lot. And then about 34 weeks pregnant, she actually fell, she broke her ankle, and it uh, broke severely enough, it required a surgery where they had to put in two plates and nine screws. So a huge stress that impacted her nervous system during pregnancy, that is gonna automatically have been fed into our son Mason's nervous system when he was in her womb. When baby does decide to come out, the birth process is the next biggest thing that we see. The labor, if labor is really long and really extended, that can add to the stress and the strain the child is experiencing. Um, again, here, going with my wife is the example, because now at 34 weeks on, her she couldn't be walking, she couldn't be exercising, and uh, doing the movement that she was doing prior to that to help prepare her body for uh, labor and delivery, she had a knee roller, so everything started to shift in her pel pelvis. As a result, labor ended up being 30 hours. And um, we believe, especially because she had been getting adjusted well up until that point, is that the imbalance of being on a knee roller affected her pelvis. And guess what? Birth didn't go as smooth as we had planned. Fortunately, uh, Mason came out safe and he was good to go. 
um, after some work though. When he did come out, he also had the cord around his neck and around his torso, under his arm. Uh, we believe he actually had a, a fracture in his collarbone because of how long labor it took and he got, he got stuck there for a moment. Um, as I said, he did come out safely, but that was a lot of stress for his little body to experience early on. <clears throat> and one of the things then now is we're starting to get like stress in the nervous system before baby comes out stress in the nervous system in their first transition to the world and now that amygdala that fight or flight system is really starting to fire more and more and more i was listening to a doctor once present and he uh, his estimate was that about 50 percent of a baby's personality is developed by the time they're born so even before they come out into the world 50% of their personality is developed. So that just shows how important pregnancy is in impacting what baby's perception of the world is, whether they're feeling um, that stress coming in or they're feeling kind of relaxed and chill and, and sort of calm. So needless to say, our son Mason showed a lot of signs of stress early on. He didn't nurse that well. He was a lot more colicky than we expected. Um, aside from the collarbone, I, when I was feeling his head, his cranial bones really overlapped a lot more than most newborns that we work with. Again, because of the intensity of the birth. So his body and his nervous system took a lot more work um, for a newborn than we normally see in the office of helping reset things and get things calming back down. One of the... Um, early reflexes, so there's uh, called primitive reflexes are what babies are born with that help them move through the birth canal. It helps them if you wipe their mouth or their lips, it helps them find that nipple or that bottle to, to start to nurse and to feed and their reflexes because they don't have control over them. So I mentioned earlier, one of these reflexes with breathing has to do with why these two connect. So this reflex, it's called the Moro reflex, M-O-R-O. -O. And what it is, is if you have a little baby and you are to like move them quick or there's a loud sound or a bright light, they do the Moro reflex where they, they go into fight flight and then they curl back in. Now what happens is if baby's nervous system is been under a lot of stress early on, and that lower brain is firing fight, flight, fight, flight, fight, flight, this reflex stays turned on a lot longer than it should. Normally, three, four, five, six months, it should dissipate, where you have a two-month-old and you move them, you stimulate a bright sound, a bright light, you'll see them go open up, and then hopefully they curl back in. What this has to do with asthma and anxiety is if this reflex is staying on, your child is going to be stimulated into that fight flight, that stress response, a lot easier. So two kids go to the movie theater and one, if the lights and the sounds are activating this reflex, they're gonna be under the surface being stressed, 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 triggered by that way more than the other kiddo. Or certain movements, um, one thing we'll do with kiddos in our office sometimes if uh, they're lying on their back, I'll grab their legs and I'll just pull them to the end of the table and I'll pull. It's kind of like a little quick movement. And some kids, they just look around, no problem. Other kids, what I'll see happen is they'll go and their arms will go out quick and their face, you can see this little stress response in their face. It's because that sudden movement was activating that fight flight in their body. So if that stress is stuck on, now what should be a normal thing just to pull a kid a few inches on a table, um, what should be normal is triggering fight flight in their individual body. So now if they're on the playground, if they're trying to do gym class, certain things like that, suddenly again, their brain might be getting this fight flight trigger more often than they should. So obviously they're gonna feel more anxious than they need to feel. With asthma, we know that asthma, a lot of times, the breath comes in, but it's tough to get that breath out. So picture, 
right? The breath's coming in, 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 and guess what happens? If it's always getting triggered, you start to get this pattern where it's going in, but not coming out. So if their nervous system never gets a chance to reset, suddenly these two things can start to develop together. How then that shifts now into the immune system has to do with these stress hormones. When the fight flight is triggered in our body, there's this response, the, they call it the HPA axis, hypothalamus pituitary adrenals. And adrenal glands might be something that you're more likely to have heard of. Those release the stress hormones, things like adrenaline and cortisol. So when we get stressed, boom, they start pumping out those stress hormones and they're for a good reason. They help us respond and act on that stress. They're designed, however, to be done short term. And it's based on back in the day, if you're walking through the jungle and a tiger jumps out, your uh, adrenals pump out a bunch of adrenaline, cortisol. They give you this burst of energy to run and sprint. And ideally, you've run, you've either flighted or you've turned around and you've fighted, but it's a, like a short-term interaction. You get away from the tiger, you're safe, your heartbeat calms down, your breathing settles down, you said, kind of get this sense of relaxation because the danger has left. Your lower brain says, all right, we're safe now. Everyone calm down, turn off the alarm bell, we're safe. These stress hormones also do something good for the immune system. We've all heard that stress is, takes a toll on our immune system. However, in the short term, stress is actually good for the immune system. Short bursts of adrenaline and cortisol actually activate the immune system. One of the reasons being is if we do fight flight, we're, our body's anticipating a potential injury because we might have the, a tough uh, tussle with the tiger. We might get a scratch or a bruise. So our body's activating our immune system to get ready for something like that. So in a short burst, those stress hormones give our immune system strength and support. However, if they get left on long-term, that's when stress becomes bad for our immune system. Because now, when we do need them as a little burst to clear out a bug, a bacteria, a virus, it isn't there because they've been worn out. You've been in fight flight all the time. Your kiddo's been in fight flight nonstop. So they don't have that burst of energy when they need. They don't have that adrenaline rush to help clear out a bug. And over time now, your immune system starts to shift. So that immediate, like first line of defense response, we uh, technical term Th1, and then there's this other side, Th2. And that's more of developing antibodies and creating a long-term response. These two should be pretty equal. And I'm explaining this because now we're, I wanna tie into allergies. These two should be pretty equal. If your body's under long-term stress, they start to shift. The Th1 comes down, Th2 comes up. And guess what? With that shift, now your immune system is out of balance and it starts reacting to things it shouldn't react to. Pollen in the air, cats and dogs, dander, that pet dander, dust, um, the thaws. We had a woman in yesterday, she's like, yeah, when it thaws, I feel like something with mold creates a little allergy in my body. So ultimately this stress, because it's been stuck on long-term starting early on, now starts to shift the immune system out of balance and the immune system starts to react to things it shouldn't react to. And that's where allergies come into play. So what do you do about it then? Obviously I'm coming at it from the neurological chiropractic approach. And what we see in our office is if we can help the nervous system get back into balance, we start to clear out some of the old patterns of stress. And that starts to bring not only the immune system back into balance, it starts to relax the lungs, allow for normal breathing, and it starts to decrease that feeling of anxiety, nervousness, and stress. Um, I want to give you some examples here and then uh, 
Um, actually, I'll explain what it's doing in the brain first, and then I want to just give you some examples of people we've worked with to show you how this um, can be applied for yourself or your kiddo. So ultimately, I think I had some markers here. I'll be right back. <clears throat> the stress response when this lower brain is interpreting stress, it's signaling fight or flight. What it's doing then is it's cutting off the connection to the upper brain. So the upper brain, uh, the PFC is also called the prefrontal cortex. And what that does is one is it helps us see beyond um, like the, the intensity of a stress. If your kiddo's nervous about something at school and you talk them through it, if they calm down after you talk them through it, it's because they've been able, able to activate this front part of their brain and sort of reassess and realize, ah, that's not that bad. However, what happens is when the brain gets in stress mode, it shuts down the ability to activate this front part of the brain. Now, what happens is there's a nerve called the vagus nerve. And that is the calming nerve in the brain. It's the nerve that is the opposite of fight flight. We think of it as the brake pedal. So if you get stressed, the gas pedal goes on. And if you stay under stress, it prevents the brake pedal from being activated because that's very closely tied into this upper part of the brain. When your kiddo's brain has been in chronic stress, what happens is this upper part of the brain has never really had a full chance to turn on and start developing. Now, the good news is that part of the brain doesn't fully develop till the mid to late 20s. So if, it, if it's your kiddo we're talking about, you still have plenty of time. And we actually see really good results with adults too. So the, the thing is, if we can help this area calm down and start to realize that it is safe, it allows information to start to feed into this upper part of the brain. That now sets the stage for healing in the body because it's activating this vagus nerve, the brake pedal, it helps bring things back down and it starts to reset these old patterns of stress. As the old patterns of stress get reset, not only calmer, but starts to balance, as I said, immune system and breathing. So what does that look like in the body? I'll give you, this is, an example of a, an adult woman, but a good example from the allergy standpoint. So she had been, she came to see us in her mid thirties. She had been on allergy meds since a teenager. Every spring, every fall, um, all through the seasons would take allergy meds. When we did her first scan, we were looking for old patterns of stress stuck on in her body. We want to see these white bars. If we see areas of color, that tells us that there's old patterns of stress stuck on in the body. This upper neck is one of the most critical areas because that's what allows the vagus nerve to get activated. Um, maybe I'll take that back. This putting good info here allows it to get activated. And then as it's coming down, it's actually starting in the brain stem, the base of the brain there, as it travels down through the body to calm to clear out inflammation, to help activate good balanced breathing. Immune system is regulated through the vagus nerve. Digestion is regulated there. And it comes from this base, the brainstem, which is the upper part of the neck. So when the upper part of the neck's off, it magnifies the ability, uh, it magnifies the stress in the body because it um, prevents that ability of the brake pedal to be activated. So we started adjusting her. You can see things clearing out here and continuing to progress. Now the cool thing is, as we we're going through care, she was able to get off all her allergy meds and now it's been several years where she has gone through spring and fall, zero allergy meds. Um, since we're talking about allergies, we'll go to, this was a gentleman, you can see some up top there, a little bit in, this is the lung area actually. Um, sometimes with asthma, we'll see it in the lung area, but actually we'll see up here more common because again, it's that chronic stress stuck on in the body. 
as we started adjusting him, he was allergic to dogs. And I remember him coming into the office a few months into care. He's like, hey, Dr. Ty, guess what? Someone brought a dog to the office today and they were walking back and forth a few times. And I was like, kept waiting for my congestion, my sneezing, my watery eyes, drippy face to start. And it never did. And so he's been doing really well also. <clears throat> um, go here. This is a teenage boy, 13 year old. Um, uh, another scan that we do again, we want to see the white bars, a ton of stress in his body. And when we started adjusting him, his follow-up scan, we can see still work to do, of course, um, but a lot more white bars in this follow-up scan than this early scan. And one of the struggles he had with asthma is his parents would say every time he'd go outside and play like with his cousins or his friends, he would often have an asthma attack. As he was going through care, they noticed him being a lot calmer. He started sleeping in um, several hours later than usual. He would be really wired to get up at four or five in the morning. Mom said one day, hey, we, he was actually sleeping in until his alarm clock went off. We had to wake him up before school instead of him normally being up uh, several hours earlier. So as his nervous system calmed down, that's why you see a lot more white bars here. Um, it put his body into that brake pedal mode, slowed things down, allowed things to start healing. And again, several months into care, mom came to me one day, she's like, he's been playing outside, like all these triggers that used to trigger an asthma attack, he's doing fine, not needing his inhaler at all. And then uh, last example, again, from an immune system side and getting things balanced here, this was a seven-year-old girl who came in to see us because she had had, um, since early on, a lot of congestion and issues up top here. So we'll see allergies can be, um, again, when there's chronic fight and flight. And then also sometimes there's things off in the neck that build everything up. Um, and almost like the, the drain in your bathtub, if it's plugged with hair, or the, the stoppers in there, all the fluid backs up. And once you can unplug it, everything's drained. Um, so in this girl's case, she had tubes at five years old, and even then she was getting repeated ear infections, and mom felt like she was always sick, like there was always some sort of cold lingering, runny um, eyes, nose, like congestion, mucus, phlegm, that whole thing. Um, you can see her first scan, a ton going on there. Um, and this was when she saw us at seven years old, because of all this congestion up top, it was affecting her body's ability to like detox and clear things out. And the ENT was saying, hey, you should have her adenoids out because everything's getting so swollen and stuck. So we started adjusting her big shift here. You can see obviously way more white bars, um, still some more because it was all on one side. All of a sudden here now we're seeing the really balanced pattern and even more all cleared out white bars. And as we were adjusting her, about six weeks into care, mom's like, it's been a really good stretch. Like her breathing is clear. Um, it doesn't feel like she has a chronic cold. And um, again, you know, a few months down the road as the body heals and restores and repairs, she's like, we went in, adenoids are good. So we're not having like the worry of the doctor like pressuring us to take the adenoids out. So ultimately, when we put all that together, Want to share some? Wanted to share those stories of when we get the nervous system in a balanced state, it starts to clear out those old stress patterns. Helps to balance the stress hormones, balance the breathing, and put your kiddo's body in a really good state for growth and healing. So in the immediate term, you see the effects of a calmer kid, more ability to listen, to behave, not have outbursts not feel anxious and nervous. And obviously those things still come, they're part of being a kid, but their ability to de-stress, to come down from that stress is always so, so very noticeable. And with time, as their nervous system balances, their immune system balances, and you start to see that trickle down effect in their life. Not only in these areas, but now we're activating this front part of the brain for ongoing ability to learn to have that executive function that helps us succeed as an adult. So please reach out if you have any questions. I'd love to chat more. 
and see what we can do to help you or your kiddo. Take care. Thank you.